I created a graphic novel using nothing but ChatGPT, Midjourney, and Affinity Designer and Publisher. And so can you. Meet Maya, the female hero of our story, and Leo, her partner in crime. In today's video, I'll show you how you can create an entire storyline, character concepts, individual scenes, and all the necessary dialogue for a full-blown graphic novel or comic book. And guess what? So can you, and I'll show you exactly how it's done. So first of all, I start off by opening ChatGPT. Then I start a new chat thread, and I switch to GPT-4. I'm using GPT-4 primarily because I've found it to be considerably more reliable in following my instructions to the T. GPT-3.5 sometimes has a mind of its own, and no matter how much I insist on it doing exactly what I want it to do, it'll just continue doing whatever it wants. GPT-4 also seems to be much better at understanding the entire chat history and also giving me responses that are actually contextual to what we're talking about. So at this stage, I usually start off with a foundational prompt that sets the scene. This prompt is usually much longer than any of my follow-up questions during the conversation. For this particular exercise, my foundational prompt consists of four distinct parts. Part one, you are an excellent storyteller and graphic novel author. Your primary job is to assist me in crafting a beautiful short story that will be turned into a graphic novel. The graphic novel will contain panels created with Midjourney. This primes ChatGPT for everything that is to follow and also gives it the persona of a storyteller. This part is actually quite important because it will influence the way ChatGPT responds to my follow-up questions as we go along through the conversation. And here's the second part of the prompt. Part two, input variables, the variable genre, which is adventure, theme, two treasure hunters searching for a long historical treasure in Southeast Asia, and pages four. Now you might be wondering why I'm defining variables in my prompt. Well, first of all, it makes it much easier for me to reuse my prompt at a later stage and simply change certain variables in order to create an entirely new story. I don't actually have to go through my entire prompt and search for the different references to different aspects of the story that I want. And I can easily reuse these variables in different sections of my prompting process with ChatGPT. So here I define the genre as well as the broad theme of our new story. I also defined a certain number of pages, which is meant to indicate to ChatGPT roughly the length of the story that I want. However, I must admit that I kind of messed up this part because honestly, the number of pages isn't really a good indication of how long a novel should be, or at least not with respect to the story. Let's move on to part three of the prompt. Part three, the story. Please come up with a short story based on theme that uses elements that are typical for genre stories, Provide me with a three to four sentence summary and store it in plot. So in this part, I actually tell ChatGPT to give me the story. So as you can see, instead of actually entering a specific genre or theme, I'm referencing the variables that I defined earlier in the prompt. I've also asked ChatGPT to store the result in a new variable called plot, just in case I need it later on during the process. And now let's move on to the last part of the prompt. Part four, scenes then break down the story into a reasonable amount of scenes that would fit into pages of a graphic novel. Describe each scene in 20 words or less. Where suitable, please add brief dialogue that captures the essence of the scene. We will use the dialogue for speech bubbles in the graphic novel. So this is the part where I asked ChatGPT to break down the story into a number of scenes that fit into well, the number of pages that I asked for. I've also asked it to add some dialogue, which I can use within my graphic novel later on. So technically, you could have also turned the word count into a variable that you could have defined further up in your prompt. However, this prompt is merely a demonstration of what I did for this exercise. So let's have a look at what ChatGPT came up with. It gave me a fairly lengthy response, including several scenes, but let's have a look at the plot first. Two rival treasure hunters, Maya and Leo, begrudgingly team up to find a long-lost historical treasure hidden in Southeast Asia. As they face dangerous challenges together, they eventually form an unbreakable bond and discover the true meaning of partnership. 
Now, that sounds like the typical kind of adventure treasure hunter story. And I guess this doesn't really tell us too much about what's going to happen in the story. However, if we take a closer look at these scenes that ChatGPT has defined for us, that's when you start to get an idea for what the story is going to be about. So let's do that. So here's the part of the ChatGPT response that I did not show you earlier. As you can see, it produced a total of seven distinct scenes, each with its own description and some brief dialogue. Based on this, our current story goes a little bit like this. Maya and Leo accidentally bump into each other on a Southeast Asian market while each one is staring at a map. They then reluctantly agree to work together and try to decipher the map. Once they do, they take off into the jungle and encounter a river crossing, which they successfully overcome with, it, with teamwork. They find a hidden temple, solve some puzzles, and gain access to a treasure chamber. They find the treasure, but face the dilemma of having to choose greed or friendship. They choose friendship and walk out of the temple together. The story closes with both of them standing on a cliff, looking out at the landscape. Okay, so this is already pretty good. However, I'm not entirely sure whether these scenes are enough. You've probably noticed how there are some significant gaps between some of the scenes. And we're not really sure what's happening in the story. It's not entirely clear how they get from one scene to the other. So I gave ChatGPT some feedback and I asked it to elaborate. That's not bad, but I don't think those are enough scenes. We need to fill the gaps or add detail. Using the same story, create a total of 12 scenes with dialogue. And guess what? It did just that. It added considerably more detail to the different scenes and the storyline. And even though there are still some gaps, I'm pretty sure we can fill those by ourselves. Or we can potentially treat them like the end of chapters. Who knows? Remember, I'm not trying to create a full-length graphic novel here. I'm just trying to show you what the process would look like if you were to try to do it yourself. Okay, so now that we have our story outline, we can probably start creating some images for our graphic novel, right? Well, technically, yes, but we still don't know what our characters actually look like. So let's change that. So we already know that our two main characters are Maya and Leo. However, we know very little about both of them. But of course, that's not a problem because ChatGPT will happily oblige and share whatever we need to know. So I started off by asking it to describe them. Please describe each character of the story in 20 words or less. And here's what ChatGPT responded. Maya, resourceful, determined, and fiercely independent, Maya is a seasoned treasure hunter with a sharp wit and a kind heart. Leo, adventurous, charismatic, and intelligent, Leo is a skilled explorer who values loyalty and friendship above all else. So while this says a lot about our character's personality and their strengths, it's not exactly what we need right now at this stage. Sure, these are important elements of the story. However, ChatGPT already knows this and has already integrated them into the storyline. Instead, what we want to know is what they look like. So I tried a different type of prompt. I actually wanted you to describe what each character looks like, how old they are, and what sort of clothes they are wearing. And this time, ChatGPT fully understood what I wanted to hear from it and produced two very brief but suitable descriptions of what Maya and Leo look like. Maya, late 20s, athletic build, shoulder length dark hair, wears a green cargo vest, cocky shorts, and sturdy boots, carries a satchel. Leo, early 30s, muscular, short cropped brown hair, stubble, wears a worn out red bandana, beige shirt, cargo pants, and hiking shoes. You could probably input these descriptions straight into Midjourney and get some decent images. However, what I usually do is I take some of these elements and I craft an entirely new prompt based on them. We also haven't defined any particular art style for our graphic novel yet. So let's do that and create some portrait images of Maya and Leo. Obviously, everyone has different tastes and style. And depending on what sort of a graphic novel you're working on, you'll probably have to experiment with different prompt elements until you get exactly what you're looking for. Personally, I like to use combinations of different art styles because there's rarely a single word that encapsulates exactly what I want. For this graphic novel, I've decided to use a prompt that looks like this. 
blend of comic art and line art in full natural colors. So this combines elements of classic comic book artwork with the high level of detail that usually comes with line art. The reason why I've added full natural colors to the prompt is because Midjourney usually associates black and white colors with the concept of line art. I will usually place this prompt at the beginning of every single prompt that I use to create a particular scene or particular image. So why exactly at the beginning? Well, from my personal experience, and especially ever since switching to version 5 of Midjourney, placing the style that you want at the beginning of the prompt tends to be more effective. At least that's my personal experience. Also, for this particular exercise, I'm not too fixated on keeping the characters 100% consistent in every image. My primary objective is to keep the art style roughly the same. So let's have a look at our prompt for Maya. Imagine blend of comic book art and line art in full natural colors, a full body portrait shot of an attractive Asian woman in her late 20s with an athletic build and shoulder length dark hair, wearing a green cargo vest and khaki shorts with, a, with sturdy boots, carrying a satchel, tropical rainforest in the background. And then we add our parameters. As you can see, I've fully incorporated most of the details that ChatGPT gave us about Maya. I've set the aspect ratio to four to five because I'm creating a portrait image. And I've set the stylized parameter to 750 because I wanted to return more creative images without going too crazy. And we'll mostly keep this value the same throughout the entirety of this video. So here's what Maya roughly looks like according to Midjourney. Remember, I said I'm not going to be particularly strict with regards to the consistency of our characters. Today's video is exclusively about the process of creating a graphic novel. If you want to learn more about character consistency, well then go watch videos about character consistency. And I'm not interested in hearing people lament about how all these tools are not capable of producing exactly what they want. If you're that damn picky, just go learn to draw, problem solved. So next, let's check out what Leo's prompt looks like. As you can see, the logic is mostly the same. I've only replaced the character's features. Here's what Leo's portrait looks like. Once again, these aren't 100% consistent, and that's absolutely fine. They are, however, good enough for what we are trying to do. Some of these images might actually feel familiar to you because I shared some of these images earlier this week on social media. If you'd like to get more real-time updates and insights on what I'm actually working on, then follow me on Twitter. I share new images, ideas, and prompts nearly daily, and it's a great way to stay in touch as well. So now that we've picked a style that works for us, it's time to start working on the images of the various different scenes of our story. Okay, so now is where the real fun starts. However, it also happens to be one of the more challenging aspects of creating a graphic novel. Asking ChatGPT to come up with stories, characters, and scenes is one thing. But even if Midjourney is going to help you create the images for your graphic novel, you're still going to have to put in some thought regarding the size of the images, as well as the dimensions of the panels for your pages. Some scenes will also require multiple images, especially those where you can't really fit all of the action into a single image. Now, ChatGPT could probably help you out with this as well. However, I decide that I would just figure it out myself. I mean, what's the point if there isn't a single creative element left to this whole process? So let's do this ourselves. But before I start, I'd just like to give you some fair warning. I'm not going to be able to explain every single tiny detail on every single prompt and every single image. There's quite a bit of material to go through. I mean, seriously, we've got 12 scenes to work on and I don't want to bore you too much. So let's get started with scene number one. Scene one. In a bustling Southeast Asian market, Maya and Leo accidentally bump into each other while following the same ancient map. Dialogue. Hey, watch where you're going. That's my line. Here's the prompt I used for this image. Imagine blend of comic book art and line art in full natural colors, attractive Western man in his early 30s with short cropped brown hair and stubble beard and shirt in beige color walking through bustling Southeast Asian market reading a treasure map. Version 5, aspect ratio of 9 to 8 and stylized 750. Let me quickly explain structure here a bit. I start with the style prompt. Then I follow with the prompt that describes my character. 
and then I follow up with activities and locations. You don't have to do it this way, and you'll see me switch things around later on, but usually this works quite well. You probably also noticed the aspect ratio of 9 to 8. I chose this because I'm going to use smaller panels for this. You'll see what I mean at the very end. Here's what we get from this prompt. Next up, let's create something similar for Maya. This is mostly the exact same prompt, except that I've replaced the character's features. And this gives us the following image. So basically, the very same type of scene, but with Maya in it. I still need a third image, though, because we need to convey the fact that they've bumped into each other. In this prompt, you'll notice that I start with the style, but then I immediately set the scene first. Only then I add the characters and finally end with the activities. As I said, you will need to experiment with what works best for you. I've also changed the aspect ratio because I'm creating a wider image panel. Okay, so this completes our first scene. Whether you use just one or multiple images is really up to you. In today's exercise, however, you'll see that sometimes one is enough, while in other cases I have to use more than one image. And yes, I'm absolutely aware of the fact that the faces and clothes are not consistent throughout all of these. As I've already said, that's not the point of today's video. You can make these far more consistent with some simple photo bashing and image prompts. But the process is simply too time consuming for this video. Okay, let's move on to scene number two. Maya and Leo reluctantly agree to work together deciphering the map's cryptic riddles. Dialogue, fine, but we split the treasure, deal. Here's the prompt I used for the first image. This prompt is much shorter and focused on the surroundings because I need something that conveys the activity. The resulting image isn't perfect, but it does a good job of showing what's going on in the scene. I need one more image though. So we come back to the core prompt, except that we're now in a tropical bar and both are deciphering riddles on a map. Cool, so we now have all our images for the second scene. Let's move on to scene number three. The duo embarks on their journey, navigating through a vibrant village filled with locals. Dialogue. We should ask around for clues. Good idea. For this one, we only need a single image. This time I'm going to use an aspect ratio of 9 to 8 again, because I want to create a bigger panel. And here's the image of Maya and Leo walking through the village. This transitions us straight into scene number 4. Maya and Leo receive vital information from an elderly villager about the treasure's history. Dialogue. The treasure is cursed. It tests the hearts of those who seek it. Once again, a single image should be sufficient for this. Since placing three characters into a single scene is always a bit tricky in Midjourney, I've opted to leave out Leo. Only using Maya makes this much easier to do. And I think this one turned out quite all right. Moving on to scene number five. Journeying through the dense jungle, the duo encounters a treacherous river crossing, testing their teamwork skills. Dialogue. We'll need to build a raft. On it. This scene is a bit trickier because it requires close-ups as well as zoomed out angles. We'll probably need three different images for the whole thing. So here's the first one. I need an image showing both our characters walking through the jungle and a river should be close by. I think this one does a pretty good job. However, I also need an image showing how they arrive at the shoreline of the river. For this one, I've opted to leave out our character descriptions again because we're focusing on the surroundings. And as you can see, this works really well because the characters are so small anyway. But we still need one final image to close out the scene. Once again, I've chosen a much shorter prompt here. And even though the consistency of the characters suffers a lot, it does a great job of conveying the activity. Let's move on to scene number six. While resting at their campsite, Maya and Leo share stories about their past adventures, finding common ground. Dialogue. I never expected to meet someone who understands this life. Me neither. For this scene, I'm going to need a total of two images. Luckily, I can probably squeeze out two images with the same prompt. And indeed, by simply re-rolling the prompt a few times, 
I was able to extract these two images. One simply shows Maya and Leo at their campsite, and on the other one, Maya actually has a slightly concerned look on her face, which is perfect for what is about to come. In scene seven, things get dangerous. Facing a dangerous snake, the pair works together to avoid a deadly bite. Dialogue. Distracted, I'll grab a stick. Got it. For this scene, here's the prompt I used. And once again, I was able to extract two images from this one. One image in which both are approaching the snake, another one where Maya is fighting the snake herself. All right, let's move on to scene number eight. The duo discovers a hidden temple entrance and solves a puzzle revealing the entrance to the treasure chamber. Dialogue. We did it, Leo. Together, we're unstoppable. For this scene, we need at least three images, but I'll try to go for four. Here's the first prompt. By simply re-rolling this prompt a few times, I was able to extract another two suitable images already. This image right here shows them approaching a temple-like structure. And this image shows a different perspective as they walk towards the entrance. Next, I need an image suggesting that they're solving a riddle. This prompt should give me an image of Leo standing within a temple. And sure enough, even though this really isn't a perfect image, I guess this works. But I still need one more image that suggests that they gain access to the chamber. I actually had to re-roll this one quite a few times, but I finally settled on the following image. I like this one because it shows that they're happy to have found the treasure. Now let's move on to scene number nine. Inside the chamber, Maya and Leo find the treasure, but also face a choice, greed or friendship. Dialogue. We could just take it all. But at what cost? So here's the prompt. This one is quite easy because I can use the same prompt with two different aspect ratios to get two suitable images. Here's the image with an aspect ratio of 9 to 8. And here's another variation using an aspect ratio of 9 to 4. So we're getting much closer to the finishing line now. So here's scene number 10. Choosing friendship over greed, the two leave the treasure behind, triggering a trap that seals the chamber. Dialogue. That was a close one. We're better off without that curse. So for this one, I'll probably need three images again. But instead of showing you every single prompt, I'm going to finish off these last few scenes by only showing you the images that I picked. Remember, the process is largely the same for every single one of these. This image shows how Maya and Leo have their doubts. And in the meantime, the sun has come up over the jungle. They decide to walk away instead. Exiting the chamber triggers a trap that seals the door. Maya turns around one last time. And then scene 11 begins. Maya and Leo stand side by side on a cliff, looking out at the vibrant Southeast Asian landscape, celebrating their new bond. Dialogue. We found something more valuable today. Friendship. I picked this image because I wanted something big enough to cover two-thirds of the page. And I'll use this one for the dialogue. And finally, the story ends with scene number 12. Ready for their next adventure, the duo walks into the sunset, excited for the challenges ahead. Dialogue. Where to next, partner? The world is ours to explore. So here I do more or less the exact same thing, except that I start off with the wider image first, followed by a nice big one that covers the rest of the page. And that concludes the full story of our graphic novel. But we're still missing one essential part, we still need a title as well as a cover image. So let's get to work. I asked ChatGPT for some suggestions on what to call our story. Here's what I asked by the prompt. Come up with three suggestions for a title for the graphic novel. Please also describe in 20 words or less what the cover image looks like. It then suggested these three titles. And it also provided a description for the cover image. Maya and Leo back to back, wielding their tools with a dense jungle, hidden temple, and ancient map in the background. Using this description as a template, I created the following prompt for Midjourney. 
you probably noticed that I'm using a multi-prompt here. The second segment is meant to apply more of a movie poster look, while the third segment ensures that we get as little text as possible. Now check out the images that we get. I agree that it might look a little bit too much like a movie poster. However, I really like the look that it has, so I'm going to keep it. And if I add Treasures Beyond Gold as a title, then it looks like this. Now all I needed to do was put it all together into a nice graphic novel layout using Affinity Publisher. And the overview of all of the spreads looks like this. Since I know how much you guys love to work with templates, I actually put together a folder on Google Drive. It includes all of the ChatGPT prompts and answers. It also includes the Affinity files and templates, including the cover image. And it even includes every single image that I used within this graphic novel. If you'd like to get access, simply confirm your email at the following address or click the link in the description below. And if you'd like to learn more about character design, storytelling, proc design, and just good old prompting in mid-journey, then make sure you check out these videos and playlists as well. This channel is meant to be a place for you to learn and improve your skills. So keep on learning and take care.